Hi everyone, let's briefly discuss parametric equations and curves. For example, let's consider this parameter t, which represents time in seconds, say, or the central angle of this circle, this unit circle, in radians. We can describe the motion of this red particle using these parametric equations, x equals cosine of t and y equals sine of t, where t is allowed to vary over the reals, all reals. So think of t as a time parameter. As time progresses, this particle revolves counterclockwise around this unit circle. And we must indicate the orientation, that is the direction of this particle along the circle, by an arrowhead, like so. Now, we can eliminate the parameter in these equations by considering the classic Pythagorean identity. Cosine squared t plus sine squared t equals 1. Well, x is cosine of t, so cosine squared t is x squared plus y is sine of t. Sine squared t is y squared. We get x squared plus y squared equals 1. And the graph of that is the unit circle. However, we lose something as we eliminate the parameter. What do we lose? We lose our sense of direction. We lose our sense of orientation. So that is a price that we pay when we eliminate the parameter, although we do recognize the equation of the unit circle here. It makes it easier to graph. Now, sometimes there are restrictions. So for example, let's say that instead of allowing the, the parameter t to vary over all reals, let's say that t is only allowed to go from zero radians to pi radians. If that's the case, what part of this curve do we pick up? We only pick up the top half of the unit circle. We indicate orientation again. Uh, and when we eliminate the parameter, we again get x squared plus y squared equals 1. But since we're only picking up the top half of the unit circle, we need to put a restriction. For example, y has to be non-negative. We pick up only the points on the curve where y is non-negative. Now, instead of these, let's say that we have the following parametric equations. How about x equals 3 cosine of t and y equals 2 sine of t? where again, we allow t to vary over all reals. Presumably, t is increasing in value. Time progresses. Now, let's solve for cosine of t and sine of t. So we get cosine of t equals x over 3 here, sine of t, equals y over 2. But we still have this basic Pythagorean identity we can work off of. But this time we have, this time we have, when we eliminate the parameter, we have x over 3 all squared, that's cosine squared t, plus y over 2 all squared, that sine squared t equaling 1. Again, we're appealing to the basic Pythagorean identity here. Cosine squared t plus sine squared t equals 1. We get x squared over 9 plus y squared over 4 equals 1. And that's the standard form for a what centered at the origin. That's the standard form for an ellipse centered at the origin. It's horizontal because the larger number is under the x squared stuff. A equals 3. B equals 2. Center of the origin. And again, the curve here is oriented counterclockwise. The particle travels counterclockwise along this ellipse. Now, 
what about something more basic? How about a line segment? For example, how do we parameterize a line segment that goes from one comma two up to, let's say, four comma six. Here's the initial point, here's the terminal point. Consider this directed line segment, looks like a vector. In fact, we can think of this as a representation of the vector Four minus one is three, six minus two is four. This is a representation of the vector three comma four, represented as this directed line segment. Now, how can we parameterize this directed line segment? X equals what? Y equals what? Let's let T vary between zero and one. So when t equals zero, we start at the initial point, x equals one, y equals two, at the initial point, that corresponds to time t equals zero. And we're going, we're going to let the terminal point four comma six correspond to time t equals one second. So here's the direction vector three comma four. The trick is we put plus three t over here for x and plus four t over here for y. Then when t equals one, we get x equals one plus three or four. When t equals one, we get y equals two plus four or six. So as t varies from zero to one, as t goes from zero to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and so forth, up to t equals one, the particle is traveling from the initial point up to the terminal point and t varies from zero up towards one. You can eliminate this parameter. Uh, so uh, for example, you can solve for t, t equals x minus one, all divided by three over here. Solve for t, t equals y minus two all over four. A horse is a horse, t equals t. You can equate these equal to each other. So we get x minus one all over three equals y minus two all over four. And then maybe solve this for y. This here is an equation for this line segment. Uh, we do need to restrict it though. So uh, x, for example, is restricted from x equals 1 to x equals 4. Okay, We don't get the entire line. We're only getting a piece of the line. And again, this equation loses orientation, but we know the orientation for this parameterization. You'll see this stuff later on.